one moment at a time. Mm -hmm. Not even one day, not even once. It is like one step or one moment at a time. Sometimes you're looking so far ahead. How will I get this accomplished? How will I even do this at the end of the day? That can overwhelm you. And you know, one of the other things I say here is when we're really depressed, everything is distorted. You're listening to God Hears Her, a podcast for women where we explore the stunning truth that God hears you, He sees you, and He loves you because you are His. Find out how these realities free you today on God Hears Her. Welcome to God Hears Her. I'm Elisa Morgan. And I'm Erin Eddy. What do you do when you find yourself feeling down? Do you curl up in a ball and watch a movie, read a book, sleep, pray? open your Bible, or maybe eat some good chocolate. (laughs) Today we're talking with a lover of chocolate, Katera Patton, who will help us in navigating our blues with some practical advice from the Bible and her own experiences. Katera is a senior editor for our Daily Bread Publishing and an author of many books. She currently lives in Chicago with her family. We are so excited for this conversation with Katera. Let's get to know her on this episode of God Hears Her. For me, growing up, Sunday mornings meant you got up, you went to Sunday school, you went to church, you came home, but it didn't stop there. I really saw my parents live out their faith Mm -hmm. and the difficulties of life. We prayed together as a family every Sunday morning. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) as a parent now, I realize just how much commitment (laughs) it takes to do that. No kidding. And (laughs) here, my parents were doing that in the 70s when I grew up in their home. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I talk about a foundation that was very solid, secure, blessed, and wonderful, Mm -hmm. that's what I had. Mm -hmm. I had a brother and a sister who were older than me. I always talk about how they were really smart and on task. So I kind of had no other choice but to follow them or totally break off. Right, right. From there, I went off to college at um, Dillard University in New Orleans. Dillard is a historically black college and university. One of the best decisions I probably made because my best friends, the two that I consider my girls, Literally, I met at Dillard University, oh, wow. awesome. along with many, many other people. At Northwestern, I got accustomed to Chicago. I moved away for two years, but I got back here. And then from there, I've been here. This is such a bubbly, exciting, um, <laughs> I'm watching God work in my life conversation. Mm-hmm. And all that is so powerful for anybody mm-hmm. who's listening. But you've also recently written deeply on the topic of the blues, and I'm not meaning the music genre, right. I- I'm meaning the blues of emotions. And so as we turn our conversation, that might surprise a listener who's mm-hmm. taking in this conversation going, what does she know right. a- about <laughs> the blues? I mean, look at her, it's all that and everything she wants. And how did the topic of depression, anxiety, that kind of stuff, find its way into your sweet, hopeful heart. It's amazing. I have to say the first time I spoke about depression, I said, y'all, I didn't sign up to be a depression speaker. Let me tell you, I got about 50 other topics I'd rather be talking to you about than depression. But depression hit me. Depression Mm. hit me hard, even with what could look like success and a nice resume. One, I think burnout probably contributed to it. I went to seminary full-time as well as worked full-time as well as did so many other things. My mother died in 2006, major grief. Even as a woman who's a believer, that sideswiped me in a way Mm. that I would not have ever imagined. Because after all, eternal life is what she lived for. Eternal life is what she talked about, Mm. but I don't think I fully, I didn't know what life would mean without her. Mm. And that hit me at the same time a relationship ended. I was single at the time and yes, all kinds of, so it was several different for me, circumstantial things happened. And then I think environmentally, just many things happened to really pull me down in what I consider to be about a three year it's hard to get out of bed struggle. It's really hard to get out of bed. I prayed and prayed and prayed. I would go to work and come home and just lay out on the couch. That's Mm. all I could do. That's all I had the energy to do. And I made a deal 
one day I was about to come home and I was like, all I want to do is go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I was like, if if that's what you do, if you go to sleep today, you have to call a therapist tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that was the deal I made with myself. And I had a really great friend say, let's pray that you can find a therapist that is helpful, that's a Christian, Mm -hmm. that's all these things she just laid out for me Mm -hmm. because it was a struggle for me. Mm -hmm. And um, that was just a very rough time. And even in the book, I put that I'm naturally cheerful. Mm -hmm. Optimism and positivity, extrovert is my natural lean, but I wear the mask well. Mm -hmm. And when... I kind of almost feel sometimes I swing on both sides of the spectrum because of that, Mm -hmm. because it's, I'm so high and so happy and so morning person. Let's go that when it hits, it hits and I know it. And when it's continuously, you can't get out of bed without something help there without tricking yourself or giving yourself a a treat. Like Mm -hmm. for me, it was chocolate. Mm -hmm. There was a period of time I had chocolate next to my bed Mm. and I knew something was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) When you're having chocolate for breakfast, as much as I love chocolate, (laughs) That, that was a drug for it. It's an antioxidant. No. <laughs> no, but... Let's get some chocolate. I'm making light of it, but... <laughs> but, I, you know, I am so grateful for your honesty and vulnerability mm-hmm. because it is... I mean, that's something that's been part of my past where I remember waking up in the morning and thinking, what do I want to do today? And I'm thinking, I would like to sleep, you know? Right. I think mm-hmm. I'd just like to stay here and just sleep. It's a numbness, too. Yeah. And when I spoke, like I said, I spoke, I did my first speaking piece around 2000, 2000, maybe 2003, 2004. I can't remember the exact date. But the audience, you can look people in the eye when you describe the numbness, the not being able to really get out of bed, the amount of people who look like they got me. Mm-hmm. And then even in my inbox, like I started posting a little bit about it on Facebook and so many people anonymously sent me notes. I'm sending you this anonymously, mm. but you really helped me. Hearing you say this helped me. That resonated with me. So I knew there was an audience out here who needed these words, mm-hmm. who needed to hear some of this story. So you you went then you sought out therapy. And I love that kind of deal you made with yourself. If you're yeah, going to go yeah. to bed now, you're going to call therapist tomorrow. I mean, that is like mm-hmm. super smart. So you did that. But what other steps did you take? And how did you finally find your way digging out of this? And you're cutely calling it the blues, but it's depression. Yeah, it's depression. It's really focusing on mental illness, like the depression, the anxiety, the blues, whatever has you really down. So that's what we're calling it. But I my first therapy appointment, my my therapist is like, this is depression. She was like, it's, and I had told her it had been for at least at that time. I don't even know the years. They kind of blur sometimes. I think I told her one to two years. She was like, if you've been feeling this way consistently for one to two years, that's depression. Mm-hmm. And we then tried all kinds of things from something as simple as over the counter. It's the first time I had heard of St. John's warts. Mm. She thought I could try that. Which are not warts, just to be clear. It's an herbal supplement. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. That you can buy over the counter. Mm -hmm. And I felt comfortable beginning there because I have to be honest, I did have some intrepidation about taking medicine. Mm -hmm. And I had a good friend in my ear who was kind of against that. Mm -hmm. She was kind of against the therapy too, because, you know, people always have opinions on it. Mm -hmm. So she was... She sounded okay with St. John's also. She had heard of it. Mm -hmm. And because it was a natural herbal, something you could get over the counter. So I started there. I don't think I felt much difference. And and all of these therapies, it's so hard to put your finger on what works because you really have to do it for a a while. And yeah. yeah. And also incorporate lots of different things. I can tell you the therapy definitely helped Mm -hmm. doing that over and over. I would do it weekly. And then we moved me to another drug. And I probably took that for six months. And I can't say I thought that helped either, but I was slowly getting better. And I I don't know if it was primarily from the therapy, the prayer, and just working through some things. But honestly, my therapist, I still actually call her for checkups today. She became just a vital part of 
me unpacking so much stuff that mm-hmm. probably had just been buried and yeah. and just needed to be voiced in yeah. a lot of ways. What's interesting is you've yeah. described your childhood and your amazing parents and your phenomenal education and this career that blossomed. And I guess I, I'm just like Aaron said, I'm so grateful for your honesty because we can find ourselves yeah unable to get out of bed, even when our lives have been good. You know, maybe it's the burnout and the the incredible energy that you had to put out all the time in our our beings. In other conversations, we've talked about our souls feeling so trapped and hurried that we lose, we disconnect. So even that can tip us into a place of un health mentally. And I'm so grateful that you are bringing your story forward because I think it's one many can identify with. I also have a theory, which is only a theory. And I try to share this when I identify other people. I think sometimes high achievers, like it's a part of that burnout piece, but it's also, I expected life to always be grand. I expect it to be high forever. I was born high. Mm -hmm. Look around me. My family loved me. I got A's. I did the, I got scholarships. I got invited places Mm -hmm. and life is not always high. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so either you're going to learn how to deal with it now or perhaps later. And I believe it compounds itself to lots of different things hitting you all at once or whatever. And we know mental health can be chemical, hereditary, life circumstances, many different things can contribute to it. But I definitely have been through depression and I recognize the signs and I tried to fight it. It's been a journey for me. I'm really glad you brought out the high achiever piece. I'm one as well. And Erin and I have talked about that a lot together. I'm a three on the Enneagram. You probably are as well. Me too. Um, But, you know, saying that, and I've suffered from depression in different seasons of my life too. And Mm -hmm. I do have some abusive elements of my past, but when I really unpack the things I became pained, deeply pained over, often it was a lack of control. Mm -hmm. Often it was the reality that I had fought to accomplish, not fixing everything around me, you know? And uh, so I really, again, appreciate that. It can come to us in such unexpected packages. Absolutely. Something that my therapist reminded me a couple weeks ago, I was just unpacking some past stuff. As we do in therapy, we bring (laughs) all of our suitcases in and we say, which one do we want to undress today? And I was sharing some shame that was really feeling heavy on me. The shame was coming from choices that I made And I made these choices because I was trying to protect myself, but I did it in a way that I, the choices were unhealthy. That's good. But it was still the way that I was wired, the way that I go after something, the way that I challenge something. It was the only thing that kept me safe, even if it was an unhealthy choice. And I think about when we're talking about high achievers, the thing that may have run you into the ground, maybe experiencing burnout, maybe not recognizing things that are going on Mm -hmm. internally because you're on to the next, is still the thing that will also help you get you out of bed. You know, Hmm, it's the thing, the thing that got you there is the thing that also will help you get you out. And Mm -hmm. it was good for me to hear that instead of villainize that side of me and be like, that's a wrong thing of me. It was like, no, it it got me in it, but I also, it also got me out of it. So Katera, as you've learned yourself and and say, you know, your best friends Mm -hmm. is speaking to you and they're struggling with it, you know, what would you offer and what do you offer, you know, in terms of what you write about, what kind of hope or handholds, you know, how do we pull ourselves up or what do we do to get out of bed? You know, how do we respond to the depressions that we face? My main takeaway, if I summed up what I wrote, it would be one moment at a time, Mm -hmm. not even one day, not even once. It is like one step or one moment Mm -hmm. at a time. Sometimes you're looking so far ahead. How will I get this accomplished? How will I even do this at the end of the day? That can overwhelm you. And, you know, one of the other things I say here is when we're really depressed, everything is distorted. Oh, that's good. So Mm -hmm. that small little piece is huge. It's a mountain. And it really is a mountain because for you, your perception is real. Right Mm -hmm. then it's a mountain. So if you can take a deep breath and try to just do one step, 
one level on it. You don't have mm-hmm. to climb or scale the entire mountain today. Find what you have to do. It's it's a very practical book, driven by scripture, but also my practical life experience. Mm. Find the one thing you have to do. If you're a parent, get the kids up, get them cold cereal because we lower the bar here. Yeah, baby. <laughs> you do yeah. not have to cook. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless, of course, cooking is relaxing to you. Some yeah. people could mm. actually push through. Right. But cold cereal works mm-hmm. on those days. Mm-hmm. It's finding ways to ask for help. Mm. A lot of times we don't. And a lot of times our friends honestly want to help. And I I talk a lot about friends Mm. who say, snap out of it, just blink out of it. That's like, right. Of course, we would always snap out of it if we could just snap out of it, right? A lot of times people really want to help and they just don't know how. So I talk about the ways I've been helped. Mm. By the time I got married, I had been through a serious string of therapy, which actually probably helped me Mm -hmm. and put me in a position to be married. But one time when I was married, I do remember a little bit of sadness seeping in. And I went straight to bed after work and my husband came in with a plate of food. That plate of food looked like gold. Someone (laughs) giving you food to eat in bed. Right. Right. That, That just remembering that. That made my heart leap just up. And it probably wasn't even anything special. He probably hadn't gone to the store to make up a gourmet meal. It was just the care Mm. of serving someone a meal Mm. in bed. Mm. So your friends can do that. I mean, I know people who are struggling with depression, we tend to isolate ourselves. But I bet if you told two of your friends, I could use a home cooked meal, Mm. they'd have a delivery thing right there at your house to be able to help you. Because honestly, people do want to help. They just don't know how a lot of times. So those are some of the small ways. I And it's all very small. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, This thing is overwhelming and it's so huge. It can consume you. Just understanding it's one thing. Do one thing, one step. And I even suggest getting a playlist when you're feeling well of your favorite songs so you can go to it right away because you can't think when you're in the midst of depression a lot of times. You're just, you're numb again, like I said. So having some of these things on ready creating a list of things or activities that do give you joy so you can go to that list and find one as opposed to trying to think about what would make me happy right now what would help we want to take a quick break in our conversation to let you know that if you're struggling with feeling any type of the blues it's okay to seek help Find a therapist in your area or go to mentalhealth.gov for helpful information. That's mentalhealth.gov. You can also call or text the number 988 to speak directly with someone. You are so loved and we want everyone to feel supported when facing the blues. Yes, we do. Now let's get back into our conversation where Katera will share with us how we can help ourselves and the people we love going through a hard time. Many people are different. Like what I would consider helpful to me, even the plate of food might be annoying to someone else. So asking, and I always also suggest people who are going through it, sharing what could be helpful. Can you pick up the kid? Can you do this? I also think not isolating yourself Mm. as hard as that might be because all you want to do is be alone under the covers and have this dark cloud pass away. As it's working on passing away, being around others can be very helpful. And Mm. so I do encourage that in the book. I tell a story that I shared with a friend just yesterday. Her daughter is 15 years old and my friends gave her a baby shower. Mm -hmm. So this was 15 years ago. So every time I see this young girl, I'm reminded of the time I had to trick myself Mm -hmm. to go to the baby shower. Mm -hmm. I rearranged my schedule so I'd be closer to her house at the time of the shower because I knew I wouldn't. No excuses. I just knew it, right? Mm -hmm. But I went to the later church service, which pushing yourself to church service can help too. I went to a later church service, which was closer to her house. I went there and we played so many games and I'm a huge game person that I lost myself. But I remember the feeling of enjoying Mm -hmm. competing Mm -hmm. because that's what I love. Mm -hmm. I lost myself in that and I went home feeling just a little bit better. My depression didn't leave me totally, but Mm -hmm. just a little better. So that 15 year old daughter is a a beautiful reminder, my girlfriend's daughter of, wow, 15 years ago. 
it was tough for me to get out of bed. I'm very moved by your comment that it's not just one day at a time, it's one moment at a time. And yeah. and you then yourself wrote out 90 moments, you know, to take in. And honestly, we know that God is truly the author of our health. And as we turn to him, he is going to provide what we need to move towards it, therapy, medicine, etc. Talk for a minute about how how God reaches to us, how you've watched him show up even in your blues and wedge you out of bed. <laughs> One of the main things, and I think Aaron spoke just a little bit about it earlier, is I had to unpeel back the shame too. Yeah. This whole mental health, mental illness, depression, blues things carry so much shame with it. And one of the main messages that I speak about, it comes through with reviewing characters in the Bible who actually went through depression. Oh, that's Elijah great. is a huge one. I mean, there's a story in there where he's like, Lord, I'm ready to give up here. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at his story and see, okay, one, he's in the Bible. <laughs> he's a huge prophet. Yeah. He's a man of faith. You know, he struggled here yeah. and God gave him some pretty practical tips. Yeah. Take a rest. Yeah. yeah. Get some food and don't exaggerate. <laughs> Look, I got about 7,000. <laughs> I'm right Talk there. about but distorting. We, yeah. I love we that know don't depression exaggerate. will do that to you. Right, and he's God. looking around. Nobody's here working for the Lord but me. Really? You miss <laughs> all of those people? <laughs> but, you know, it's true. <laughs> That is so and good. Then, I've just never heard somebody actually say that before. <laughs> we, we've talked about depression and anxiety a lot on the podcast in different depths. And yep. that is so, <laughs> as somebody that has gone through it, that is Very so refreshing. true. Yeah. It, it is refreshing. take that load off of you yeah. of the guilt and shame around it. Then we even go to Jesus. I mean, you know, when he faced his mission, he cried out and and that was some serious pain. And those were some mm. serious words and serious emotions. So one, this has helped, God has helped me get to a position of not being ashamed of it, yeah. mm -hmm. which is huge. That's about half of the healing right there, yeah. right? You can begin to say, you know, my emotions are not right today yeah. or I'm yeah. whatever and be okay in that place. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that has been extremely helpful for me. Yeah. It's reviewing your testimony, looking to other saints. All of these messages throughout the Bible yeah. have actually played a part in helping me understand my healing. Yeah. Even understanding, I think there's one place in there where the, uh, in the New Testament where the friends bring their friend to Jesus because he couldn't walk and they lift him up through the roof. And I think of that as it's okay to need the help. Mm. It's okay to rely on others because sometimes you can't do it. Yeah. He could not walk into yeah. that house and get his healing. Sometimes I'm going to have to rely on others. And that's a huge piece for us. Yeah. We're not used to truly relying on other people. We're scared sometimes to rely on them, yes. especially if we've been burned or hurt in our Absolutely. past. To rely feels more scary than doing it on Absolutely. our own. And then mm. just the whole, I can't underscore enough for me, the grief piece. Mm. Grief as in my mother dying. Grief as in some dreams not coming to realization. That whole five-year plan piece, mm -hmm. even when you're praying about career direction, you might expect something like this to happen and it doesn't happen quite like that. Mm -hmm. Or worse yet, it ends. That's a lot to have to deal with. Yeah. And again, coupled with so many other things, it's, it can be really rough. And even that, taking that and looking at some of the characters in scripture who grieved deeply, yes. you know, whether it yes. was Mary at the cross or, you know, the widow bringing her son out from Nain, or we can go on and on David in the Psalms. And yeah, Absolutely. if we could just strip back this self-imposed mm -hmm. shame and instead right. receive the nudge from the Holy Spirit of sweet pea, you are not mm -hmm. whole. Right. And I love you so much to allow you to feel it. Now, come to me and let's get you some help. And acknowledge your emotions. Also, there's a passage. I just take a simple passage of Jesus wept and realizing Jesus coming to grips with his emotions and releasing them. How do we release our emotions? Mm -hmm. It's crying. And there are many other ways, mm -hmm. healthy ways that we can employ and 
And we need to encourage ourselves to make sure we're doing that. Mm -hmm. So emotions won't add up and build up and burst and fester into what can be depression and anxiety. You know, Katera, sometimes we ask our our Mm -hmm. guests uh, to pray as we conclude our conversation. And we want to ask you to to pray for that woman. Maybe she is a high achiever. Maybe she's in the throes of grief. Maybe she can't get out of bed. But would you pray for her for this moment to moment? hope that God wants to give her. Yeah. Gracious God, we come right now acknowledging that you are a healer, a fixer, a mind regulator. God, I lift up the listener right now who is going through her own depression caused from whatever we don't know. I ask that you send your sweet Holy Spirit right now to descend upon her and help her to find what she needs to make it one more moment. God, I ask that you introduce whatever healing agent is needed to her right now and give her the courage to grab hold of it as she grabs hold of your hand and knows that you are watching over her, that she's your child, and that wholeness is in your will. We thank you and we praise you for Aaron and Elisa too. In Jesus' name, amen. What a beautiful prayer, Katera. Thank you for that insight and the reminder that people in the Bible are examples of living through hard times. Isn't Katera wonderful? Well, before we go, we want to remind you that the show notes are available in the podcast description. You can also find a link for Katera's new book, Navigating the Blues. Find out all of this and more when you visit our website at GodHearsHer.org. That's GodHearsHer.org. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget, God hears you, He sees you, and He loves you because you are His. Today's episode was engineered by Gabrielle Boward and produced by Jade Gustman and Mary Jo Clark. We also want to recognize Will and Dave for all their help and support. Thanks, everyone. God Hears Her is a production of our Daily Bread Ministries.